King J. Bats fall on the ground. IG really wants to take this Rax if they can. Here comes the stun being charged up. It's a level 4. He's going to be backed off. He might get stunned. Actually, nope. He's going to phase shift it. Is it here? Throw this in. Ferrari baited that out. And actually, yes. he's going to get initiated on. Is that There's scary? no phase shift on him. He does a ton of damage. He does phase shift just now. How getting drained by quite a bit. And the orb coming through as well. But Puck's got to be careful. Soul Assumption flies through. And, and a big stun. echo by Chuan at the top there. Ferrari's going to pop out. And he actually gets blown up by Banana. But there's the kill. Who does some great damage to 6 as well. But healing up by quite a bit. There's the Fissure, catches on to how might go down. Soul Assumption, Joe's still alive. That didn't actually kill him. And very, very low. Here comes the last stun, and that's going to be a guaranteed kill. With the, the medallion, jar. enough damage to be able to pick him off. Yeah. And wow, that's Tong really Fu point. managing to hold, not actually losing their racks there, and picking up quite a bit of gold on top of that. Anti-Mage for going that Manta, instead going for the uh, BKB off the bat oh, just wow. so he can fight. And Mu's got 2,700 gold off that fight too. Really interesting choice, but not a bad choice at all. It's a lot of nuke damage from IG. If there is a Hex, this is going to be one way to counter it. He won't be able to drain mana as fast, but just being able to right-click and get his ulti off when needed is, is going to be a nice pickup. He hasn't used it yet, and they still were able to defend that, so hopefully for Tong Fu they can stop this Rax from falling, but they've got to be careful. I mean, they're pressuring really hard. Do you think they're going to go more passive now, IG? I mean, I think they thought that they were super far ahead, and they were, but just a series of dives... Um, and underplaying that, they were like, oh, well, if we lose a hero or two here, as long as we're getting a tower or at least one or two trades, we're okay because we're so far ahead. Mm -hmm. But Tong Fu slowly closing the gap, and they have the heroes to do it too. They've got an Anti-Mage, an Alchemist, and Grievel's Greed. That is a really underrated spell. That really makes your gold growth just accelerate at such a quick rate. And how he's just farming the bottom lane, going to split pressure this, make it difficult for IG to continue to push that top lane. And I think IG is going to continue to uh, just farm now. Maybe get the hexes up before you go for another fight. Or a butterfly and gyrocopter. I mean, he survived that last fight for a very, very long time. If he can get evasion up this early into the game, it's going to be really hard for him to die. Yeah. I think that was uh, the wrong decision going the second time, especially when a Roshan is up and they can just get a free Rosh and then push in and win the game for sure. Yeah, that's a good point. If Joe was able to have an Aegis there, they would have won that fight. Yeah, he would have respawned. He almost ended up pulling the fight out. And then uh, there was a lot of cleanup. On and I like this move by Tongfu. They're playing aggressively. This is a smoke. Where's actually uh, actually looking for um, How right now? He's baiting out the middle right now. The entire team is smoke. They don't want to go on Ferrari. Bit of a difficult hero to kill. And Banana gonna turn around, try maybe try to pick up a creep. But IG's ready for this fate. Ooh, they're going for a Ninja Roshan. Is what they're doing. They oh, use wow. the acid spray in an area that won't be scouted necessarily. And they're right clicking. They don't have the medallion, is the problem, but here comes the Chen. And from the high ground, there's a medallion. So an extra minus six armor on Roshan. Moose can be able to take this up. The rating oh, and team's I think coming. they know. They either know or they're just guessing that that's what's happening. Will they walk in, though? They haven't checked yet. I don't think they actually realize the transfer are going to scout this out. Now they're going to have to fight. There's a the call down as they realize BKB pop for Joe. Trying to pick off Sans Jing and going for the other carries. Dire team grabs it. Anti Mage grabs the Aegis. Joe's going to try to grab as many kills as he can here. King J goes down. There's the blink in. Six actually takes a ton of damage down in the pit. But uh, we will see Chen get cleaned up by Puck. The rest of the heroes in the backside. YYF right-clicking like a monster. But Anti-Mage runs away with his BKB. And not too bad for Tong Fu. They steal the Roshan. They get the Aegis picked up. Anti-Mage does still have that Aegis pickup. But it's only for two supports off of IG. So not a bad loss for IG. But a bit more, more Tong Fu's great gain there. They don't really need the Aegis. But Tong Fu definitely needs the gold. Yeah, and Tong Fu actually gets the Aegis on uh, Hao. And he's got 2,900 gold. I, I remember seeing this guy and I was like, oh, he's got 400 gold. And then all of a sudden he just kind of pops out with a BKB. And now he's got 2,900 gold. He's doing an excellent job of coming back into this game. And the more that this happens to IG, where they're not able to pressure the anti-mage out, the worse this is going to get for them. Especially, I really like that BKB decision. Being able to fight early and not just get chain hexed, that's going to be huge. And Ferrari, though, he's going to pick up a hex any minute now. But there's two BKBs now on the side of Tong Fu. I can't believe that Anti-Mage has been able to pass up the net worth. I mean, there was a period of time where he was at the 30% mark on the top of the net worth. They had Gyro ahead of him, he had Nature's Prophet ahead of him, and Puck. And that's just not the case anymore. He's got his Yasha picked up once he grabs Manta and BKB. He can jump into these team fights and go on here, especially Earthshaker. That guy is absolutely vulnerable to Anti-Mages at all times in the game. Even Puck is going to have some trouble. And with this much mana pool, actually, if he gets some of this drained, he can get killed pretty easy. Yeah, and Tron going to place that board there. Just... Really smart ward too, just yeah, denying that uh, ancient farm from the anti mage, which is really big actually. And how gonna get stuck? But sells his quelling blade, picks up the Yasha, gonna go into the base, heal up, and Tong Fu looking like they can make some sort of comeback. 
Are they just going to push the bot lane? Uh, they've got Butterfly and a Mask of Death on Gyro, so his survivability is way up. It's a pretty good item build to have versus anti mage because even if he does dodge the attacks, he won't even get mana drained. But I think they, yeah, there's a drawing on the map. They want to shift from the mid lane into the jungle, possibly contest there, and then take some kills. Tong Fu's currently playing really safe because they know, like, it looks like they're on the upswing of a comeback, but if any of their heroes die or get out of position, they will lose a Rax, and that's going to break a lot of the comeback that they've had. Yeah, and Hal picks up the Asha. He's at 1,700 gold. He's going to have a Manta any time now. And Chen, I really like Banana's uh, item build. He's going to go for... He has the Buckler just for the armor, I guess. He was going to go for a mech, but chooses not to because uh, the Alchemist has one. And he actually goes for the Vladimir's Offering and the Medallion. So just doing everything he can to help this Anti-Mage out. Yeah, no kidding. Really, really nicely. It's like the uh, super poor man's build. Yeah, it doesn't give him a lot of individual HP, but the overall percentage of uh, team fight strength that it gives you is really good. Five armor for him and his support heroes is great. There's some lifesteal now in Alchemist. Anti-Mage gets some lifesteal, and most of the damage sources that IG are working with, uh, the only one that Anti-Mage is really going to be weak to is the physical aspect, and that's going to be further strengthened because of the Vlads. Yeah, and IG saying, okay, you know what? This game has gone on long enough. They're going to start pushing out this top lane. But I think at this point, even if Tong Fu loses this Rax, they're willing to give it up since the Anti-Mage is getting so much farm now. And, I mean, Mega or, uh, Super Creeps at top at 30 minutes isn't too bad. As it would have been like 10 minutes ago when IG was originally pushing in and how he's going to pressure this bottom lane out so close to that Manta. He's 18 gold away. Is he going to wait for it before they engage? Here comes the TV's call down as well. BKB and Joe, he's now right clicking move. But I don't think he can fight this here with the evasion. There's the Fissure comes through, hits how DD on Ferrari is right clicking really hard. Great disruption. And now an ulti on Faith. Faith's in a lot of trouble. That's going to be an easy kill. Such a sick cleanup with the demonic purge. And how goes aggressive again. Ferrari may be in trouble. The sprout on how. And the disengage as IG is again not able to take the melee barracks. And this is just starting to look really bad. The gold graph has flattened out. It's been at 8k for a while. The EXP is dead even here. And Tong Fu has been able to turtle this repeatedly. They hook Sasha shot back is going to get picked off, but Ferrari manages to blink out. Or wait, no, what? Oh, no, it's the orb. This? Yes, he will. King J gets hit by a missile, one of the most OP skills in the game. He's going to go down. And, and actually, Anti Mage goes down now. And IG, they're up as four. Wow. How did this change all of a sudden? How? He gets hexed. Oh man, the hex is going to be enough. They actually pick off the anti-mage. Silence as well after this. And all of a sudden, they lost a hero, but they're able to turn it around. Yeah, and How over an extension happen? by Tong Fu. And Mu not being able to do too much damage. He has the mech up, but not going to be able to defend this. And Tong Fu looked like they were making a mini comeback. But wow. King J calls the GG. I'm, I'm surprised they gave up here, honestly. Really? I mean, they were going to lose two racks. Because the anti-mage was dead. I suppose that's true. And he's kind of like their only hope kind of here. Look at the Chen's farm. He's got 800 gold and a bunch of support items. He's got a lot of armor. He's got 20 armor on the Chen. Super tanky. It's like... Like a frail little teenage boy underneath a plate mail or something. That's a you know? really terrible analogy. What are you talking about? He's got 850 HP. Alright, regardless. Anyways... Nice win by IG. Well, it, it, it was a bit of an uphill struggle, that's for sure. It started off so well, they, it looked really one-sided, and then they barely caught up. Uh, Puck might end up dying here. We'll see. Survive, Ferrari. Live. Oh, he's just fine. He's going to go. take some damage. And they're just going to poke each other. Man, I feel like that was so anticlimactic. I mean, it was such a great defense from Tong Fu. They're like, we held, we held, we held, and then we finally held, and then we they lost. got the Rex. I mean, they almost got the Rex in 20 minutes. They delayed it till 30. They did take the melee Rex. They probably could have forced a double Rex at this point, but I don't know. Anti Major was just hitting the swing. He had really good farm despite the horrible start. I mean, his start was really weak. Not his fault, of course, but he got his core items up. He had the BKB, great choices, but I guess they're going to go one and one, so my original prediction, I'd like to point out becomes accurate. One and one IG Tong Fu. Pretty sick game from them though. They they did play an excellent early game, but they got a little overzealous with dives. That's what it seemed like to me. I don't know. Yes, I completely agree here. And it just Tong Fu's lineup just really didn't really do a whole lot of damage. And when they went to gank YYF at bottom with uh, the troll creep, I mean how exactly were they gonna kill him under the tower with a clockwork who has no levels of battery assault? I mean he was gonna cog him in then rocket and Right click and take yeah, tower right. damage. <laughs> it just, it just yeah. didn't really look like anything was going to happen, but that's the game. IG finally manages to clean it up. A bit sloppy, two rebuff pushes, but eventually manages to break through. Tongfu calls the GG. Anti-Mage not being able to carry this game. No anti-fun 
this time around. And it looked like for a second though, IG was gonna get uh was gonna get killed. Bit of a turnaround for Tong Fu. Murdered, straight murdered. Come back. But that's the game from our end. We talked about it enough. Heading over to our analysis, what did you guys think about the game? Uh, great performance from IG there. Uh, there was a few sloppy moments, to say the least, though. You get three kills on Joe off yeah. the bat, triple kill Gyrocopter. <laughs> he had 1,700 gold at five minutes, and I was personally thinking, go Midas, man, go Midas. Or get an early helm of the Dominator, get super greedy, but I think the way he played it was great. You get an early BKB, and they had a nice lineup for forcing fights. Uh, the Prophet, just a good five-man group up and push lineup. Puck had a really fast blink dagger as well, and... I like the way IG played that. I think the one big mistake was forcing that fight at the tier 3 top. They had already used Dream Coil, Call Down, the BKB on the Gyro, like all of their big spells, and they still tried to force it. It almost cost them, I don't know if it cost, almost cost them the game, but it cost them a lot of momentum. It pulled Tong Fu back into it. I think it showed you that Tong Fu is one of the best teams that just not losing when they're behind. They can hang on for a while, they'll stick around, and if they find that opening, they can really punish you. But in the end, IG... They stabilized, they farmed up the double hex, and then they went for the GG. And at that point, they just had too much farm. Yeah, it's a little bit too far behind. I mean, I think their lineup was a little bit greedy. They didn't get too much accomplished with the Chen. I mean, they tried to get the kill on bottom, forcing Earthshaker to teleport. But, I mean, did it really did it really accomplish that much? I just felt like it was a little bit uh, lacking in most stages of the game. And, again, feeding Gyrocopter is <laughs> always bad news. Yeah, and, and it's, <laughs> there's really no good situation yeah. for it. I, I loved... The coordination from IG in this game. There was that one gank bottom lane where they were pressuring top. How thought they could maybe trade some damage on the racks or even potentially give up a racks, get a tier one, pressure the tier two. But in fact, they were just waiting and baiting it. Chuan was hiding behind the tower, just had picked up a blink dagger on his earth shaker. Perfect coordination there. And then in the final fight, uh, anti mage loses the Aegis, comes mm -hmm. back, insta hacks. The bird chainstone was perfect from the familiars. It was well executed from IG. I mean, the, the skill is clearly still there. Uh, they're drafting pretty well. It's just the greater sort of the, the strategic decision making for the team, which is normally pretty much perfect, where it seems like there might be a couple of competing voices in some of these fights, but they still played well enough to take the win, and they're now sitting four and two in Group B. We can actually take a look at our group standings here, see how this affects things. Uh, and look forward to our next matches. We have three more coming up today. Very excited to have you all a part of today's Alienware Cup coverage brought to you by Alienware, MasterCard, and DPM Interactive. Was that smooth enough for you, Blitz? It was very smooth. <laughs> he doesn't even have his mic on, but he says it's very smooth. Uh, so Orange and IG now tied at the top of the group, group both of them four and two. Uh, nobody else can tie these teams if they win out the rest of the way. So if either, either one of these teams wins out, then they'll be first place in the group still. Tong Fu, they dropped to 3-3, three and three, still in a decent position in the middle of the pack. And then you have Navi and Zenith. Zenith in particular, 2-4, and four, three group stage matches into the group. They only have one left. At best, they can be 4-4. Four and four. It's going to be a tough road for them. They had a pretty strong performance yesterday, though. I have, I have faith in Zenith. Uh, end of the day... Tree OP. The great thing about this format is, end of the day, even if you lose those last two games, you're 2-6, and six, you finish last in the group, well, you still get to move on into the playoffs. You start in the, the winner's bracket... You just have to start from the round of eight. So it doesn't really punish you that much. Yeah. And it means you get to see your favorite teams more. Speaking of watching the games, if you want, there's a Dota TV ticket available. It's only seven ninety nine. if you want to support the tournament organizers, the broadcasters. Consider purchasing it. The audio isn't always the best uh, for those from the West. But just getting these first-person player perspectives is fantastic. So with that plug out of the way, uh, we can take a look at the schedule, see what's coming up next. Orange versus Navi. That'll be our next best of two. Mushi versus Dendi mid. That's what I'm hoping and praying for. I don't know if we're going to see it, though. Double Mushi Raider Mushi would be more exciting. Yeah. I think. Mushi Prophet would be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> he gives Xiaowei to run for his money as an actor. And uh, Tang Fu versus Zenit. That'll be your third match of the day. And last but not least, it's going to be the climax. Navi versus IG. International 2 rematch. Your grand finals. Something to look That's forward to. That's going to be so exciting. Save the best for last. Absolutely, and that's why we're saving ourselves for later, too, for the So casting. you were wrong about your prediction for last game. What do you think about this next series? I was half right this time. I said 2-0 one way. I, they got one win. <laughs> There's 1-1. One one. You banned me from 1-1 one one votes. I what did not ban you from 1-1. One one. I said 1-1. One one. He banned him from 1-1. One you one. banned me yesterday from them, and you said it was... You said it, it was, was a cop-out? Yeah, it was a cop-out. Well, whatever. You, you're, such, you're such a snake. <laughs> Just whatever I'm trying to make, things, make life difficult for you. Yeah, it's definitely working. So back to the original question. How do you feel about this next series? Uh, I, think, I think Orange is looking a bit better. Navi yeah. looked shaky yesterday. 
And I think the key for Navi was they got Wisp, which the Asian teams just struggle against. That was their only win, though. Yeah, but that being said, it was Navi's first day, I think, arriving in Shanghai, or maybe they'd been there for like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they've had some ch opportunities to sleep, to study the teams, and they'll be a little more prepared. Do you think Orange fares better when Mushi's mid or when he plays carry? I like Mushi mid a lot better. I like a mid on some sort of hero that scales. Templar Assassin, Obsidian Destroyer, mm. uh, Queen of Pain. Puck is okay, uh, not so much, but yeah. not really the team fight initiators. I mean, he's a fantastic farmer, but he's also a great fighter too, and I think... I mean, where he really <laughs> struggles is just like just farming too much, really. Right. In some but cases. if you're if you're a mid hero, you you know that you need to fight generally. Yeah. And Furion, he was just like, hey, I'm gonna farm all day, all day, no stopping ever. Yeah. If you gave him anti mage in that game, it would have gone completely mm. differently. But uh, Orange versus Navi, that's gonna be our next match, guys. We'll take a quick break, uh, and then we will come back and we'll be live. It's gonna be a best of two. Stay tuned. Alienware Cup Group B action continues after this.
Welcome back to the desk, everybody. It's uh, here at the Beyond the Summit studio in Los Angeles. We're casting the Alienware Cup. It's Group B action, and things are heating up. Now, coming up next is going to be Orange Esports versus Navi. Best of two, Mushi versus Dendi. Extinct versus Puppy. The list goes on. It's an exciting matchup. I am personally very excited for it. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a great game. And I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah. I'm pumped. <laughs> It's also cold in here. He's, <laughs> he's secretly trying to keep his hands warm, but he's acting like it's cold. We have the AC on blast. And with that being said, Orange versus Navi. Let's waste no time. Let's start introducing the teams, talking more about the matchup. Uh, of course, we'll start with Orange Esports. KYXY, this could be Mushi, but we've seen a lot of KYXY carry, but probably it'll actually be Mushi on the one position. Either way, though, KYXY, known for his solo play. That's really where he's strongest. Things like Darkseer, uh, if he's playing that three role. Otherwise, uh, if he's playing the one position, the Gyrocopter, the Lone Druid, likely to be the choice. He's one of the stronger laners in the Asian scene. Mushi, another dominant laner. Uh, we, we've shown all the solo mids here. If they get an Obsidian Destroyer for him, he might take the mid lane, but he's been playing more of a carry role as of late, Merlini. And then the three position, Ohio. Windrunner is, I think, his most notable hero. They love to run those aggressive challenges with Windrunner. We haven't seen them the past few days, but I feel it's something Orange could pull out of the hat. Yeah, they've been shuffling roles a lot lately. Yeah, it is one of these teams that's been a little bit in flux, and I wonder how that's going to factor into this match. Orange is a team that if they lose g game one of a series, sometimes they'll just <laughs> change the roles for game two. Uh, Mushi is known for being a bit temperamental or impulsive at times in that regard. Extinct, your four position player. Explosive jungler can be a, f a high impact support, but I think the real guy who's been stealing the show is this fifth position player for Team Orange Esports. It's Net. You're going to have Sanking up there. Yeah, Net has been an absolute monster as of late. Net. Kawa. Net. Let's see, is Net not showing up here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kawa is a little bit tired, guys. We've been working him to death, but uh, we'll inject him with some caffeine and try and keep him fresh as much as possible. Net, Sand King should maybe be there three times after yesterday. That was absurd. That was, that was incredible. And maybe a ninja as well. Two <laughs> Sand Kings and a ninja. I think that's what Net can be best described as. RNG Sports. Inconsistent, I think, is the... Yeah, definitely. When they're on their A-game, I feel like they can beat absolutely any team in the world, but sometimes they just... The mid-game, late-game decision-making is very questionable, especially for Mushi. It's always been the Achilles heel of this team. Yep. I think flexibility should... You should put flexibility up there. Yeah, well, we might move to the Octagon. That'll be when we upgrade. We move to a new new environs. Then we'll get some Octagons going. What's a seven-sided polygon? Uh, hep heptagon? heptagon? It's a Heptagon, yeah. It doesn't have the same ring to it, though. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. And I'll let you introduce Navi. Sure, on Navi's side, we have the life stealer himself, Havost. We saw him play a little bit of Naga Siren yesterday. Uh, but, again, one role player for Navi. Next, we have Dendi, the solo mid player, the flashy, showy player that is the, in many hearts of the Western world. Oh, oh, come on. You can't do it like that. It's got to be Opa, Opa, Dendi. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Funnick. Funnick, one of my favorite players, personally. Known for his Batrider, especially his Clinks, and fantastic offlaner. And then we have the captain and the support player, Puppy, famous for his Enchantress Chen, amongst other supports. Uh, calls the shots, fantastic player, fantastic captain. And last we have Kuroki, well known for his Rubik, and he has, I mean, teams just don't ban Rubik out, surprisingly. I'm, I mean, he plays that hero, like, better than almost anyone else in the Western scene. And it just synergizes so well. Often with Puppy goes Chen, Rubik's the perfect setup for that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, uh, it's it's like when you play against RNG Sports. Teams are just banning up sitting Destroyer, and it puts them out of their comfort zone. Why not do this Rubik ban versus Navi? Right. They need to save a ban for Wisp, though. That's almost true. Surely. And, well, Navi, pretty good rankings on the Hexagon. Looked a little bit weaker yes yesterday in terms of their execution and their drafting. Things seem kind of awkward for them, and... We've docked them a point here or there just to keep <laughs> as current as possible. But end of the day, Navi is still a top team, and I'm very confident they'll hop into form sooner or later. There's too much talent on this team not to, really. Right. It's, now's the time to do it. I don't think they have a shot of taking first place in Group B, but Probably certainly not. it's nice to practice. They need to get used to playing against these Eastern teams, get used to playing in Shanghai and altering their play style, whatever they need to do. And end of the day, guys, it's it doesn't matter if they lose the group, if they finish last. I saw some people saying one in seven, Navi, noob, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Twitch chat doing what Twitch chat does best. LZ said that too. Yeah, I didn't say that. But <laughs> I love Navi. I love Dendi, Puppy. They're, they're, they're fan favorites. If you don't enjoy Navi, then I feel like you don't enjoy fun. But that's just my personal fun. Fun, Nick? Huh? Huh? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let's talk about the matchup. We've introduced the two teams, Merlini. Navi versus Orange Esports. 
I actually think Navi could struggle against Orange, and here's why. Orange Esports is a team that, if they want to, is pretty good at execu executing kind of a split push, a game stalling strategy, avoid taking fights in the mid game, and Navi always wants to fight. I mean, whatever they draft, it's, it's just all about getting an early advantage, snowballing Dendi, and then taking aggressive fights. I feel like they could punish their choice of like greedy playstyle, though. Like yesterday, they did a solo safe lane Furion versus a. Uh, roaming Shadow Demon Lina from IG. Granted, IG didn't actually do aggressive triple lane, yeah. but I mean, given Navi's playstyle, they could just just crush the Fury on. And if you shut Mushi down, Orange might just topple. Yeah, I, he's always been the key for this Orange esports team. He's a boomer bust kind of player. He always does well in the laning stage, but in terms of his mid game, his late game, eh, it goes either way. So we will see. But IG that game they did not good do a good job of actually punishing the safe lane right. Fury on. So. Well, I they think... didn't need to. He punished himself. <laughs> <laughs> Mushi punished his own team. He took, he took all their farm. He said, none for you, all for me, doing his best Chuan impersonation. And in the end, it was too much. Mm. Well, so what, who do you think is going to win? I want to say 2-0 Orange. Yeah. I, if Navi get Wisp, I think it'll be 1-1. One, one. If they don't, I'm going to say 2-0 as well. But yeah. I think Navi is going to play a lot better than yesterday, even if they lose. I think it will be close. And... If they can find their form, I could see Navi 2 0 in Orange, but money on the line, I'd say Orange 2 0. Yeah, I mean, they have to ban Wiz, though. You can't, th you can't be that cocky to not ban Wiz. I as mean, they're just incredible with Wiz. Especially the way Orange has been playing as of right. late. We often see the anti mage, the split pushing style. And Funnick can play Wiz, too. He has a pretty, pretty nasty Wiz. It's kind of the sad thing about Funnick joining Navi is he doesn't play the Wisp anymore. I, it's, I think it's been Kuroki. I thought I saw Puppy, Puppy playing it yeah. at times. I want to see Funnick Wisp, but <laughs> he's a fantastic offlaner, and I think it suits him better than Kuroki or Puppy, so mm. can't really fault them. Well, we've broken it down as best we can. Let's toss it over to Purge and Blitz and see what they think about this match. I'm going to mirror you, I think. I think 2-0 Orange looks pretty good. Uh, Navi is still a very top-tier team, but they've had some trouble so far. What do you think? I'm going to say... I was thinking for a second. I think Better not be a 1-1. I'm never going to say 1-1. Orange 2-0. Just by the way they look wow. in general... Bandwagoner. Okay, you know what, Ben? Wait, wait did you also say Orange 2-0? I said it first. Well, then I can't really, like, what? I was going to say the same thing. I can't. Yeah, Where, where's where's those handed blitz predictions, yo? Dude, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a 2-0 Orange, though. Stop trying to make me say Navi. So <laughs> I think it's going to be 2-0 Orange. It's my time. You Your guys have passed. Your streak's been broken, though. You, you called 1-1 earlier, and you were wrong. Dude, I, I didn't. Or no, you didn't call 1-1. I never call 1-1. No, 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 he yeah. didn't call 1-1. I never yeah. call 1-1. He was wrong. That's loser never call talk, one but. one. That's loser talk. <laughs> so I think it's going to be 2-0 for uh, Orange just by the way they've looked lately. And I think Navi is a little outmatched here. How do you feel about... Uh, I, f I feel like there's a chance that Navi is consistent enough in at playing weird Dota, which Orange plays a little bit. I feel like they have a shot there in comparison to the Chinese teams. Would you agree with that? Like, Orange plays an unconventional style. Uh, Western teams are better at playing against unconventional styles. Do you think that's going to give them an edge? I don't know. It seems like Navi is adhering to the Chinese landscape for the most part. It looks like they're conforming to the picks and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And it just looks like they're slightly outmatched. It doesn't look like there's a large skill gap, but it looks like um, there's like an adjustment period that they're getting through yeah. where they're trying to play around the similar style that most of the Chinese do, but they're just really not on the same page yet. Maybe it helps them against a team like Orange, but I mean... I'm thinking right now them going in a late game scenario against a team like Orange where Mushi has like every single CS in the game and I just don't see how that they're going to prevail but let's hop into the game Kevin. Let's We've got the band started. So yeah, game 1 Orange versus uh Navi here. Uh Navi does have another match coming up against tonight. That match, man, that is going to be TI2 Grand Finals rematch. Hope you guys are pumped for that. Is but that the first time since uh TI2? Yes, I, I believe, believe so. so. It's unfortunately not Thanks a. It's not, no, you can't drink soda. It's not a best of three, I don't believe, uh, which is too bad because we won't have necessarily definite winner unless it's two. But um, regardless, lots of awesome matches coming up tonight. But first up, Orange versus Navi. Uh, Navi's not doing so hot right now. They're sitting at a one and three in the group. I believe they're at the bottom. Um, Orange is doing much better, sitting at a four and two, correct? Yes. Talked, we confirmed that earlier. So four and two for Orange, one and three for Navi. If they get a two zero here, they're going to be looking much better in the group. If but that's going to be tough. If they go 2-0 here, they would be, at worst, they could tie, right, with IG? At absolute worst. Is that how worst. it goes? 